This tutorial was recorded by Jerry from HCQS. They are a supplier of phone repair parts and accessories. You can check them out at hcqs.us. First thing we want to do is make sure that we turn the power off on our device before we start working on it. And down at the bottom we have two pentalobe screws adjacent to the lightning port. Go ahead and remove those. From here, if your screen isn't badly damaged, you may be able to use a small suction cup to separate it from the housing. Remember not to pull this out too far because there are still wires attached on the inside. Now, if your screen's shattered, you can try taping it off with some strapping tape or just use your pry tool to go around underneath the bottom end and separate it from the housing. Now on the 6S and 6S Plus, there will be some adhesive on the inside, so you'll have to pry a little harder than usual. But once you start to get it open, you shouldn't have any problems. Just remember that we have cables attached at the top end. We don't want to make sure not to put any stress on them. Go ahead and work your way around the perimeter of the phone with your pry tool, but you don't need to go up more than about 80% or so along the sides, and you do not need to pry the upper end. The top end of the display is held in by three plastic tabs that tuck in underneath the edge of the frame. So carefully lift from the bottom, and once you get this open part ways, you can kind of slide the frame downwards toward the bottom end of the phone in order to disengage those tabs at the top. Here's another shot showing the phone being opened from the bottom end. And again, do be careful at the top because we don't want to cause any damage or stress to those cables that are connected to the display. Here you can see he's pulling off some of the adhesive that goes around the outside of the phone. And at this point, we have a couple of options. Now, I recommend that you disconnect your battery. There are two screws down here in a panel that will allow you to access the battery terminal and disconnect the battery from the phone. This is always the best practice when performing a repair. The catch is that when we go to reinstall the adhesive, having the battery disconnected is going to be uh, is going to make your life slightly more difficult. What you can do is cut a hole into the adhesive to accommodate the battery terminal, but we're gonna go ahead and show you the display being disconnected with the battery still plugged in. Now, it is possible to repair your phone this way, but there is an increased risk of damaging components inside the phone when you have electricity flowing through it. So I do recommend that you disconnect the battery if possible. There are five screws holding the retaining panel onto the back of where your display plugs in. These will need to be removed, and they are all different sizes, so make sure that you keep your screws organized. You do not want to put the wrong screw into the wrong hole. It can cause severe damage to your logic board. Once you remove the screws, you can also remove that panel, and from here, we will disconnect the flexible cables that attach the, dis the display to the logic board. Be very careful when you disconnect these, you don't want to dig in too deep, and you want to make sure that you're getting under the middle part of the cable and not just the foam that's on the outer side. There are three screws at the top that need to be removed in order to pull this shield off from behind the front-facing camera and the earpiece speaker, so make sure that you remove these, and again, keep your screws organized. We want to make sure that we do not mix these up when we go to reinstall them. After you have the three screws removed, you can lift off this metal piece. And now we're going to fold the front facing camera over to the left hand side in order to expose the earpiece speaker, which you can see he just removed and set off to the side. And then what we'll need to do is pry underneath the microphone that is attached to the lens. So very carefully get underneath this piece of flexible cable with your pry tool and you can remove the entire front facing camera assembly. Next thing we want to do is remove the shield from behind the fingerprint scanner. You'll have two screws here that need to be removed. And then you can take the retaining plate off. From here we have seven screws that need to be removed from the rear panel. One of them is up here at the very top end of the phone. And then you'll have three more that go down each side of this panel.
Once all the screws are out, you can remove the metal panel from behind the display. From here, we're going to disconnect the pop connector that attaches the fingerprint scanner. So be very careful when you do this. If you damage your fingerprint scanner, you will not be able to replace one that scans your fingerprint. There's some adhesive that holds the button into place, so carefully push against it from the front side of the phone and apply some heat if necessary. We want to keep that adhesive intact for when we transfer the button over to the new display. So you can go ahead and set that in the same place that it was before and connect the flexible cable using the pop connector. Make sure that you peel off any plastic on the back of the replacement screen and we can go ahead and install the rear panel again. Remember you have seven screws, one at the top and three that go down either side. Once you have your screws installed, you can go ahead and put the metal panel back behind the home button. Make sure that your home button is clicking at this point. If it's stuck, you may need to loosen up one of the screws about a quarter of a turn or so. From here, we're going to peel off the adhesive strip that is sitting against the lens, and this will hold the microphone in place the same, that it, same way that it was stuck on the old display. So be very careful when you line this up and put it in the same position that it was on the old screen. Now remember, we're going to kind of fold the front-facing camera over to the left and insert the earpiece underneath it. There are a couple of pegs that will help you align this into the proper position. And from there, we'll put the front-facing camera over the earpiece speaker and into the correct position. You can install the rear panel, but I would recommend that you don't tighten it down too far until you verify that your front-facing camera is centered on the other side of the screen. If not, you can always adjust it. Once you're sure that everything is in the correct position, go ahead and put your screws back in. And you can see there he's checking to make sure the camera is in the correct position. From here, we're going to install the water resistant gasket so make sure that you remove any adhesive that's left over now i say that this step is optional this is a very difficult maneuver get the, getting this thing installed although uh, jerry does make it look pretty easy here so what we're going to do is make sure that we have no residual adhesive left over from the old gasket if you use a soft pry tool that's usually the best way you want to make sure that you don't poke any holes in anything, especially the battery or cause any damage to the logic board or the flexible cables that are attached to it. Once we're sure that we have a clean surface, we can take the new adhesive, which will come with two pieces of wax paper, one on each side of it. Go ahead and peel off the first layer and this will expose the adhesive underneath but you wanna keep the secondary layer in place in order to get this into the correct position. And remember, if your battery is unplugged, you'll need to cut a hole down inside there to accommodate the cable that will be sticking up. Now from here, you can use this template to line everything up, make sure that it's nice and straight. Once you stick it down, it's very difficult to remove this and then reposition it. So you might even consider having two or three of these on hand just in case. Again, he makes it look easy here, but I've done this a few times and it can be challenging. 
So once you've got the adhesive in the correct position, do work your way around the edges with a soft pry tool or some other flat object and make sure that the adhesive is seated up against the housing. This will make it easier for you to remove this secondary piece of plastic. Now from here, it's always a good idea to plug in your screen and make sure that it is functioning properly because once you set the screen down on the adhesive, you will not be able to remove it without replacing the adhesive again. So I recommend you plug this in, power up the phone, and make sure that everything's working properly once you have this panel reinstalled. Remember, we've got five screws and they do go into specific positions. So you wanna make sure that these are not mixed up. If you put the longest screw into the shortest hole, it will damage your phone. Remember to tuck in the top end of the screen underneath the edge of the rear housing, and then you can just kind of work your way around. This should not require a lot of pressure, and you do not want to press too hard on the center of the screen. If you're finding that you're having trouble getting the screen to seat, there is probably a problem on the inside. From here, we're going to test functionality of the screen, including the pressure sensitivity, and make sure that everything is working properly. We have no dead pixels and no dead areas where the digitizer is not functioning. If you're satisfied that everything's working properly, go ahead and install your two pentalobe screws on the bottom and you are good to go. If you're an awesome technician and would like to discuss collaboration on this channel, drop me a line. The address is mike at gocellphonerepair.com. And of course, if you found the video helpful, like it, share it, leave a comment, and thanks for watching.